Okay, so now we're going to look at the avian reproductive tract. But before that, we're going to look at the kidney. Okay, the kidneys are located in the dorsal abdomen within depressions of the syncecrum. Kidneys are divided into cranial, middle, and caudal divisions by the external iliac artery and the ischiatic artery. Each section is going to receive a renal artery, the cranial one coming from the aorta, and the other two sections coming from the ischiatic artery. In the bird, there's no clear cortex medulla demarcation. There's also no pelvis. Okay, so we're going to have several branches coming together that form the ureter. Okay, that's going to then pass over the ventral medial surface on its way to the cloaca. So there's no urinary bladder, nor is there a urethra. So the ureters themselves are what dump into the cloaca. We don't see it here, but it's important to note that the lumbosacral plexus extends through the middle division of the kidney. Okay, so the lumbosacral plexus are those nerves that innervate the hind limb. And so we may see a bird with a renal tumor, so a tumor of the kidney, presents as a pelvic limb lameness. Okay, they may start falling off their perch due to pressure or damage on the plexus. We may see subsequent muscle paresis or paralysis. Okay. Okay, so here's the female reproductive tract. In the avian embryo, they're going to have both a right and a left ovary and oviducts, but generally only the left ovary and oviduct are going to develop in most birds. Exceptions include the raptors and the brown kiwi. The right one then generally becomes just a vestigial cystic filled structure which may be attached to the cloaca. Okay. So here we see the ovary with numerous developing follicles. So this is where basic the yolk is being produced. We then have the oviduct divided into multiple portions. We have the infundibulum. This is where the ovum is going to be taken in. Then we have the magnum portion of the oviduct. This is the largest portion, hence the name magnum. We can see here albumin being added to an egg right in this region here. Okay, in the next image I'm going to stretch this reproductive tract out and we can follow it a little bit better. So here we go once again, we have the ovary, we have the infundibulum of the oviduct, which is where it's going to be taken in. This is also the site of fertilization. Okay, glands here begin to form the dense albumin portion of the egg. We move into the magnum portion of the oviduct and glands are going to be forming the prominent portion of the albumin. We move into the isthmus and within the isthmus the inner and outer shell membranes are formed. We then move down into the uterus which is actually not the uterus but part of the oviduct as well and this is also known as the shell gland because this is where the shell is laid down. We also see here that plumping occurs where additional thin fluid is added before we, we surround it with a shell, consisting of many layers, including in some breeds a pigmented layer. The cows they are developed here. These are the things that suspend the yolk between the two poles of the shell. And this allows rotation of the yolk so that it keeps the germinal disc of the fertilized embryo uppermost as the egg move, is moved. Okay, we then have the vagina now, once again as part of the oviduct, not truly a vagina, but it is a place for sperm storage. Characteristically, it is described as being S-shaped and it has many folds in the mucosa on its 
inner surface. And then that's going to open into the cloaca. So that's the female reproductive tract. I don't actually have a male one, so I created this illustration. And to kind of give you some landmarks here, here's the cloaca. Up here are the lungs. And here is the kidneys. Okay, so these large structures here, these are the testes. They kind of look like they should be kidneys, don't they? <laughs> okay, they're generally large and white during the breeding season. They'll be about half that size and more yellow in the non-breeding season. They're going to then empty into the ductus deferens. Notice, just as the ureter is emptied into the cloaca, it's the ductus deferens that are emptying into the cloaca. And large, mostly the flightless birds, and in some geese and swan and ducks, they may have a phallus. Okay. In general, what occurs with breeding in birds is what's called a cloacal kiss, where the male puts his cloaca right up against the female cloaca. And basically in this kissing, what we have is the spermatozoa being transferred into the female. And that's what we have for the reproductive tracts of the birds.